So how many APIs do you think you interact within a given day? Directly or indirectly? When you wake up in the morning until you get back to bed at night. So you may be using your mobile phone, your apps you use, your online banking, ATM systems, online stores. So all these things comes with APIs in some point at time. So that's bring us to this the API driven world. So as integration specialists, can we ignore this phenomena of APIs? No, right? So as integration specialists, we have to think about APIs and we have to think about how to do integrations with an API in mind. So that brings us to our topic, API-led integration. So let's begin our story. It's a fictitious company called SuperCity. So you might find it familiar for some when we go through the process. So they are a supermarket chain. They have been in the business for like past two decades. And they have been doing business all right. And they have stores all over the country. And now they are finding some problems. So people tend to buy stuff online. People get things delivered to their homes, even the groceries. So they have their local stores, but they have an issue. Because people are moving away from going into the direct locations and they get stuff to their doorstep just by doing online business. And they need a digital transformation. But they have, mind you, they have been in the business for the past two decades. So their IT systems must be like so old. And so basically what they do is they hire an integration partner or a technical, technical consultant. And what they say is, you need an API management solution with broad integration capabilities. That's what they say, and they hire these integration partners. And the management needs some requirements. They want to reuse their existing systems. So in most cases, every system comes with baggage. You have all the systems, and you have spent a lot of money into these systems, and you don't want to just throw away those things and use new stuff. You want to reuse existing systems. And you need lower costs. And you need faster time to market. So these are the requirements of super city management. They want to work with the legacy backbone systems. They have been working for the last two decades or so. And why not use it? So they want that. And they want room for future expansions. So these are the kind of things that we see in most of our day-to-day -day cases. So in SuperCity API Initiative, the consultancy firm says, you'll need a mobile app, a mobile store, some kind of mobile application to uh, get the groceries delivered, and a, maybe a website. So those are the things they want. And they have their existing system, the backend already existing system. And they say, you have to use an API. And you expose this to the mobile and website. So is it this simple? So let's look at it. So before we get into the details of the super city, I'm getting back into some kind of details on how we do API-led development or API-led integration. So I have mentioned a lot of pros and of using APIs. But before we get into the why APIs, we have to talk about what is an API. So, so that we need to understand that first, even before we get into the details, right? So what do you think is an API? It's a contract between two parties. If you think, if you get, 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 get down to the details, it's a contract between two parties. You have your existing systems, and you have your mobile application or the web applications. You need to build a contract. Why? Because the systems are old, and they are talking in a different language. And the new RESTful or the web applications, they talk in different language. You need message transformations. The systems are different now. And 
you need some kind of a contractual obligation and contract to manage this transformation and this contract is a must and how do we do contracts we have to design and we have to be mindful about the contracts if you are not mindful about it just just going api led integration won't work because you have to design and you have to design your apis so let's look at how people do api design or api led integration they use code first approach or the api design first approach so let's look at the pros and cons of these two approaches in code first approach the higher management comes up with requirements in this super city example what they want they want some uh, a new application or the mobile platform to deliver their groceries so what they do the back end team comes in they start implementing the requirements and then they expose their apis and then the front end teams comes in and they connect to these apis so this is a use case that we have seen with our customers with some of our, some of our customers so what happens here is when the front end teams comes in they don't like the api they can't use the api because the back end developers were thinking in terms of the implementation of their own and they have exposed it as an api but the front end team can't work with that now we going through another cycle and in terms of project management what happens it takes a lot of time another cycle designing apis and they don't go through the whole api as well they go through some sort of a, some part of it and then they redesign it and update the impl back end implementation and they they hit another blocker this goes and on and on it's a common scenario that we see in some of the companies so will it work no right so what we need is a design first approach so we have the back end teams and the front end teams so what we have to do is we have to get to get those two teams together and let them design the apis first so so is it easy so if you are doing it for the first time it's not easy designing an api so maybe you can do a proof of concept with those two teams so it's much less costly than just implementing the whole thing and understanding the issues so you can use a poc and then once you design your swagger files most probably with most of the api management solutions you can basically generate the apis and then you can even generate the mock backends why not use that technology it's there so use that and then parallelly front end teams and back end teams can work so that's the approach that you have to take so if you take something from this talk that should be this design the apis first and let's get into the integration part so the api facade so in the previous talks we talked about the api gateway part and we come to a new part that's called the api facade so what is this api facade so if we have a closer look you have your back end systems that can be legacy systems these can be saas applications databases different kind of things that doesn't talk in in most cases in the super city example restful manner i i the api doesn't have to be a restful api but still in our case it's a restful api that we are talking about what you have to do is you have to convert these back end systems to talk in a restful manner in this our case so these are called the system apis these are the things that we have to design first and then you have a composite api that uses these system apis this is called the orchestration apis so this is what we need to design and this is a sample of an orchestration api you have a restful api it invokes a system api and mind you there's a difference now we don't talk to all the system apis there might be queue implementations databases crm applications so this is something of a orchestration api that we can have a look so api facade is this one so this is the integration part of our application 
And when it comes to the integration and when it comes to the API facade, these are the things that you have to identify first, the digital assets in the enterprise. So even before designing the APIs, you have to identify the digital assets. What are the application silos? Application silos in the sense, there can be cases where in, in our super city example, there will be departments that have developed a particular software. They have developed it in for that department only and they, they are not exposing it to the outside world. Now with this online approach, they have to expose it. But have they designed it to be exposed to the outside world? No, right? So we have to think about it and identify those silos because when exposing, we might face issues. So we have to identify those application silos and the enterprise SaaS applications and the way we store our data. There can be database, there can be flat files, there can be spreadsheets, CSVs, there can be instances like that. So you have to understand your data. And in addition, you have to understand your business processes. There can be uh, management approval processes that, that in place that you have to think about and what are the things that you have to do for those things. And proprietary protocols or data formats that you have to work with. So these things you have to first understand. When you design the APIs, you have to identify these things first, even before you start writing code. And key integration capabilities. Do we need APIs and service hosting? We have to think about these things. It doesn't mean that you have to have all these things, but you have to identify what are the things in your system that you have that needs to be catered. Orchestration or services, these kind of things. Do we need orchestration services or APIs? Do we need content-based routing? Do we need message transformations? Do we need protocol switching? Do we need parallel processing? That means you invoke your two backends, say, parallelly and get the response and do some logic and respond back. So when you choose your integration vendor, you have to think about these capabilities. It, it doesn't mean that you have to go with the, like the latest or greatest software. You, you have to understand your capabilities first. If the vendor is stable and feasible enough with these capabilities and for room for innovation or room for improvement, that's fine. And the integration strategy. So once you understand your uh, backend systems, your data types and those things, you have to formulate your integration strategy. That means you have to discover the ecosystem and the application silos, understand the data types, understand the capabilities that you ha need to have in your system and understand the possible integration points. That's a, valid, uh, that's a very important thing because you might have a lot of integration backend systems. That doesn't mean in your case you need to expose everything. So in our super city example, they want an online platform. Do they need to expose their HR system? No, right? So you have to think about those things. And then implement systems, system APIs for identified systems. And uh, implement the integration logic. That means the orchestration layer. So that's the integration strategy that we have to go through. So let's get back to our super city example. So we went through this image. They have their existing system and they want to have a mobile application, website and an API. So building the API. Now we go into the details of our super city example. So they have for each local store they have, they have a post system. That's an isolated system they have. And they have a centralized price update system inventory system, reservation system. So th those are the systems they have and mind you, I, have, uh, I haven't used the HR system here because I have identified these are the systems that we need to expose to get the mobile app and the website working. And then you design the system APIs. So if you have these, these backend systems, the centralized systems are old. So therefore, they, those are not talking in a restful manner. So you have to design your system APIs to do that. And then for online presence, you need a payment gateway. You need a delivery system. So most probably these are new, new things and the new services, SaaS application that you use. Do you need a system API? 
No, right? Mostly they are they are provided with a RESTful API. So you don't provide a system API for that because there is no conversion, there is no need for an API. Yes, you might think there are situations you can generate an API, but even in programming, is it good to have interfaces all everywhere? Do you have to design interfaces all the time? No. It's, it's kind of overwork that you do and you assume stuff. But if, if it's not needed, until it's needed, don't do it. And then you connect those and then expose the mobile app. Now some part is missing here. So let's go through it again. So you have this and then you can expose it through the managed API, the API management solutions that we talked about, the life cycle management, security, those things can be done through this. So the API gateway part is mostly covered with WSO2 API manager and the API facade part is covered through the WSO2 enterprise integrator. And let's see what are the capabilities we have in WSO2 enterprise integrator that can be used in our super city example. So in terms of capabilities, most of the protocol standards are supported in WSO2 enterprise integrator and things like data stream support, file system support, messaging systems like Kafka, NATS, those things are supported in WSO2 enterprise integrator, business processors and SOAP, RESTful APIs, those things are supported. In addition, with our WSO2 connects the store, we can connect to SaaS applications or like Salesforce, SAP, things like that. So what are the components? So we have seen WSO2 EI6 series. With this month, we are going to do the EI7. With that, we have improved our micro integrator. And if you are into low code development and configuration driven graphical development, we have some improvements there and I will discuss about those. And then in addition, we have Ballerina integrator and even Dakshita talked about it. So we have Ballerina integrator for people who like a code driven approach for integration. So that is for, for those people. And we have the streaming integrator for streaming integration needs. It's uh, written using the CD complex event processor and it can support Kafka, Nets, things like that to do streaming integrations. And all these components are capable of like creating, you can create Docker images, Kubernetes aware and AWS, Helm charts, OpenShift, all these things are included in this support is included with these three components coming this month. And one of the key things that we lag behind in terms of development, developing your integration solutions was the integration studios capabilities. So with the new release, what we are thinking about is in inbuilt Docker support where we can basically once you develop your integration solution, your composite APIs, you can basically create a Docker image and even if you need, you can create a Kubernetes YAML so that you can use the kubectl to push it to your Kubernetes environment. Those features are there and inbuilt testing support where you don't have to deploy your service again in somewhere else to debug. It's you can uh, it, it will automatically start a micro integrator within developer studio so that you can debug your application and you can use the pre baked templates to do rapid application template development. So basically those things are covered in WSO2 Integration Studio. And Ballerina, so one thing that I have to talk about is Ballerina, why we write, wrote Ballerina? So one thing is people tend to use programming languages for integration. Some people like rather than going with the graphical solution, some people like to do integration solutions with the programming language. But there is a catch. So when you choose a programming language, you have to reinvent the wheel sometimes because of the integration solution you are doing. And with the 14 years of experience for us, 
So we know what are the integration capabilities you need. So that's why we say the balana is better is included. So the all the integration capabilities you require is within the language itself. And another key thing is we are building network applications, right? So in a programming language, network calls are IO calls. So it's it's IO basically. So the clients or the concept of a client, a service is not there. So but in Ballerina, you have this client aspect, the service aspect in there. So you don't have to go into the details of an IO operation. You have a client client concept there. And you have the sequence diagram so that you can see your network calls. So that it's kind of important when you debug or develop your programs. And it's cloud native programming language for integration developers. Do we need centralized architectures? I think we do. Still, I think we do. So nobody can just move away from centralized architectures just in a whim. So they need centralized architecture and we will continue with EI 6x series for centralized architectures and if you want you can have multiple composite APIs within micro integrator as well or you can use EI 6x series to do centralized architectures and micro integrations so we talked about we had a talk about microservices so we have our API services API service layers and you can have your composite services the composite APIs the APIs there and you can use either one of those components in EI, Ballerina Integrator, Micro Integrator or the Streaming Integrator as your requirement goes. And even to writing backend services, you can use Ballerina Integrator. It's a programming language. So you can write your services using Ballerina Integrator. And observability. So in our example of SuperCity, so you deploy your service. After that, still you need observ observability, monitoring your system. So we support the existing systems like Elkstack, Prometheus, uh, Kibana, those things we have support with our new slow of enterprise integrator components. And continuous integration. So this is our recommendation for continuous integration. So you have your developers doing your development through the IDEs and then you need a source control system. And through that source control system, you push your data and maybe it's Git, maybe SVN, it depends on your use cases. And then you can use a continuous integration server like Jenkins. And uh, whenever you push something, the server can fetch it and do the necessary continuous testing and then push it, deploy it to your environment that can be a dev environment, staging environment, pre-production environment. And then you can have your uh, promotion processes from uh, dev to QA, things like that develop. So you need this as well in your API led integration. Even though we just talk about APIs, in API led integration, you need the proper CI CD processes as well. So that's it. In conclusion, so what we had was the importance of API driven integration and the strategies and approaches we have to take when we do API led integration and some of the capabilities we have in WSO2 enterprise integration solution that makes you do API led integration better. Thank you very much.